Hello, good afternoon. Ay, sa mga kaibigan po natin dyan, mga magulang, teachers and students, we would like to request to kindly share ang ating link po ng virtual orientation on homeroom guidance for school year 2021 to 2022 para po tayo ay mag-start po sa ating program. Maraming salamat po.
Magandang hapon po sa ating lahat. Sa oras na ito, I welcome po mga parents, teachers, and of course students sa virtual orientation on homeroom guidance for school year, school year 2021 to 2022. Bago po tayo, yes, dediretso sa programa mga kaibigan, yes, uh, startan po natin ng National Anthem. God, oh my God, unite the hearts of thy servants and reveal to them thy great purpose. May they follow thy commandments and abide in thy law. Help them, O God, in their endeavor and grant them strength to serve thee. O God, leave them not to themselves but guide their steps by the light of thy knowledge and cheer their hearts by thy love. Verily, thou art their helper and their Lord. Biyag ida Biyag ida tunbig 
our director for on Bureau of Curriculum Development. Let us all welcome Director Joseline D.R. Andaya to give her welcome remarks. Let's give her a virtual round of applause. Uh, thank you for being here with us again as we uh, give an orientation about uh, uh, the Homeroom Guidance Program. As you know, we are still in this crisis and there are so many reports about our students uh, being depressed uh, having mental uh, problems having uh, emotional uh, uh, problems also difficulties and rightly so but even if they are students they also experience all this whole range of of emotions just like the adults just like us 
And that's why homeroom guidance is very important because it really ensures that uh, even in this pandemic, the students will know that we are with them, that uh, they are still foremost in our minds. And so uh, this is the second year of no face-to-face -face classes. And of course, the second year of homeroom guidance implementation. Uh, as you know, homeroom guidance started in time when skill, life skills to survive the crisis situation is very much needed. Uh, aside from the economic repercussions that our fellow Filipinos need to overcome, our learners also were caught to juggle between academic responsibilities and mental health concerns in a place where only virtual interaction and distant connection could feed their need for social skills development. And so uh, we are mindful of the limitations that uh, our homeroom guidance advocates, advisors are likely to hurdle. Uh, it won't be easy, and uh, I know that it wasn't easy for some. In fact, I know also of some schools that have not uh, implemented this. But uh, of course, like we say, uh, however difficult the task is, we need to do it for the sake of our learners. Um, sabi nga nila, our learners are worth the risk. And so let us not uh, be discouraged by uh, the limitations that we currently face uh, as we implement the homeroom guidance. Uh, there are only a handful of things that our children, our learners look forward to. And the foremost of that is schooling. And the dream that one day, the hope that one day they'll see their classmates again, talk to them uh, face to face, uh, make jokes, and, uh, you know, get back, uh, get to, uh, get back to being or having normal lives again. And, I think that that is something that all of us also wish to do and to have. And so in behalf of the Bureau of Curriculum Development, again, thank you supervisors and guidance advocates for this opportunity to uh, be with you once again. Maraming salamat. parts are here so my task is actually to give you uh, a brief context of homeroom guidance i won't be repeating my talk uh during its first year of implementation no uh, but i will just uh, be giving you some important things that i think would be very valuable during your regional rollout of homeroom guidance so definitely like Director Joyce said, uh, this is our second year of implementation, and uh, we we deem it necessary to really implement something that would address the life skills development of our learners, which would be good or beneficial for their mental health. Okay, kaya po yung mga nagsasabi na bakit tayo nagdagdag ng homeroom guidance sa panahon ng pandemic? Well, uh, I think we have to really appreciate this as an information component of mental health. Okay? Yung po yung dahilan bakit tayo may homeroom guidance sa gitna ng pandemic. And uh, these are the skills being developed by homeroom guidance alone, which cannot be found in other learning areas. Okay, so I hope you are getting the, you are appreciating the beauty of having homeroom guidance. But we know that, of course, there are birth pains and uh, there are some struggles to consider. 
So why homeroom guidance? Of course, just like what I've mentioned, uh, this is an information component of mental health, which is very important during this pandemic. Okay. Uh, may, may I see those who are just uh, designated or appointed as regional supervisor in charge of homeroom guidance this year? Maybe you can raise your, uh, you can hit the raise hand button there. Okay, uh, yeah. Uh oh. <coughs> yeah, uh, du during our first orientation, we need to really uh, to have a very clear context of what homeroom guidance is. No? Uh, pag sabiating homeroom guidance, it is just part of the uh, guidance and counseling services. Pag sabi natin guidance and counseling services, in dali, uh, we, oh. I had to mute someone kasi ma, para malinaw ako. Okay, when you talk about guidance and counseling services, this is just a sample illustration of how it goes. no? So the huge chunk of the work of guidance counselor is of course counseling. Okay? Uh, naging professional yan, naging RGC yan upang mag-counseling, hindi upang gumawa ng ibang non-guidance related tasks. Okay, but of course we know the reality, you know. Uh, then we have the information service. We have the information service. This is an information dissemination uh, service of guidance wherein those vital informations helpful in the life skills development in the uh, for, for the students to overcome challenges or even concerns personally in career in academics uh, this is covered by information service now the individual inventory this is just a a, a, a crash this crash discussion lang ha kasi i can discuss this the whole day kaya lang hindi naman ito yung focus natin ano that's another uh, venue okay individual inventory this is where the guidance counselor uh, interviews no students to really assess their uh, their risk no of uh, having malfunctioning behavior or even uh, if they are going through uh, something then this is the individual inventory so kapag nag nag nagarotin interview si counselor or nag exit interview that's part of the individual inventory and only the guidance counselor could actually access the data for that. And then, of course, the follow up whenever the counselor calls for another session just to check how the, the students are functioning after counseling or after subscribing uh, from guidance and counseling services. And then, of course, we have research and evaluation wherein guidance counselor is doing research to make an intervention on certain phenomenon. No? For instance, there is uh, bullying is rampant in the school. So for the guidance counselor to make an intervention, he or she needs to make a research on that to tailor fit the intervention for the school. They also need to evaluate the guidance program, its relevance and uh, benefits no? to the target population, which is the school community. And then the placement service, ito po yung tiyatawag din nating career guidance program, no? wherein uh, the, the guidance counselor is uh, guiding or even assisting our graduating or even those who will be choosing their curriculum exit or uh, career track and strand. Dito po yun sa placement service. Okay, at kasama din po dyan yung career count consultation career counseling and uh, curriculum exit assistance. No? Of course, consultation, guidance counselor is deemed as the mental health professional inside the school. Therefore, any behavioral concerns or even uh, clarifications, siya po ang dapat kinakausap ng administrators, students, parents, and teachers. Of course, we do have the psychological assessment, though we don't, though we know 
that we don't have psychological tests in school, no? But it's not only the psychological test being used here. We also take into account the academic performance, the observations, the demographics of the students, no? For us to understand where the students are coming from. And of course, we do referral. Uh, we refer students for the, uh, those that have uh, clinical conditions to the right professionals, for instance, psychiatry, psychologists, or even neurologists, no? Uh, counselors and teach, uh, I mean, teachers, administrators, and parents could actually refer their students to the guidance counselor for counseling. But if it goes beyond the specialization of guidance counselor, for instance, uh, they are already showing clinical conditions, then that's the time that counselor uh, must refer the students to outside uh, expert. Okay. Uh, yung mga counselors dito, of course, we have to be mindful of our limitations. We don't want to mess with our students or client. That's why whenever the case of our students is beyond our specialization. Okay, ako as a practicing counselor, I don't really, uh, I know and I am very mindful if I cannot help the student simply because it's not my specialization. Okay, so I encourage also my fellow RGCs here to do the same because we always, uh, we always we always advocate, of course, na yung do no harm to our clients, no? And it's the same principle whenever we do counseling. So where is homeroom guidance here? Homeroom guidance is just part of the information service. So kung napapansin po ninyo, uh, yung homeroom guidance is an information component of mental health. Hence, under po siya ng information service. Tatanungin nyo, eh sir, bakit hindi na lang guidance counselor mag-implement ang homeroom guidance sa loob ng klase? Of course, we know the scarcity of guidance counselor and they cannot do it alone. Okay? In other private school, for instance, in a private school where I came from before six years ago, no? Before joining DepEd, guidance counselor is the one conducting the homeroom. We call it guidance class, no? Sa ibang school or homeroom guidance inside the class and it's really once a week once uh once a month rather and uh but that's the ideal setup no? of course we cannot compare it with the setup of that ed so whenever homeroom guidance is uh being talked about, we can always associate it in the as one of the guidance and counseling services, but that's just under information service. Okay, why homeroom guidance? <coughs> I just presented the right context for you to really appreciate homeroom guidance, no? But why homeroom guidance? Uh, during the the crafting and development of the curriculum, of course, we do took uh, we we took note of the different concerns that our students are facing. So we have the academic failures, school dropouts, bullying, drug addiction, unhealthy sexual behavior, online and social media addiction, confused career choices, teenage pregnancy and vices, and other challenges. So these are the issues that uh, we took into account and we considered while crafting the homeroom guidance. We want to address these issues and we know for a fact that other learning areas cannot address this alone. No? Ang sabi lang natin, though there are topics, for instance, in CSP or Comprehensive Sexuality Education, there are topics uh, for teenage pregnancy, for unhealthy sexual behavior, etc. In MAPE, there is also drug addiction, uh, bullying is discussed in other learning areas such as values education. But in our learning area, these issues 
were incorporated and have been uh, considered for us to equip our learners with the right life skills, uh, life skills not to overcome these challenges. Hence, there is homeroom guidance. So when uh, I hope no, that, we, uh, that we promote the right information on the reason behind homeroom guidance. Kasi yung iba, yung mga hindi nakakaintindi na idagdag at burden lang yan sa mga skwelahan, then we have to enlighten them. No? We have to shed light na ang homeroom guidance ay nag address ng iba't ibang issue ng bata at kabataan. Okay? So what does homeroom guidance really do uh, in terms of uh, of the of its content, no? Uh, homeroom guidance actually uh, promotes rational thinking, uh, healthy behavior, and positive disposition. Ang sabi lang natin dito. Uh, pag sabi ating rational thinking, students will be able to think logically. Uh, their decisions will be based on data and uh, existing facts. When you say healthy behavior, meaning to say they are doing something for their own good, meaning to say vices and other unhealthy behavior will be prevented and uh, they, will, they will be uh, doing the things that will be helpful for their development. For instance, uh, choosing the right activities for a, wherein they can develop themselves. Ganun din naman kapag uh, uh, if they want to belong to a certain group, then they can have those people na, uh, whom they think could actually help them to become better. No? In, in, for instance, uh, in terms of academics, in terms of uh, relationships, in terms of career development. And of course, positive disposition. This is very important nowadays, no? Kasi with the negative uh, things happening around, uh, actually, in, on Facebook, nakikita natin na parang na siyang ano, parang ako everyday na lang may mga kaibigan ako o kakilala or even kasamahan, no? or tayo, kasamahan natin sa DepEd, ang daming naka-block naka lagi yung kanilang profile pic, which signifies that they lost someone. It's not, it's not uh, good to see. And it's really affecting the way we see life, the way we see things, and the way we, we possess hope. No? And magandang i-poster natin yung positive disposition nowadays for our learners for them to still believe that there's there is hope that there is uh, a chance for us to overcome this pandemic okay at uh, yung po yung ginagawa ng homeroom guidance okay through the modules or uh, activities that we are doing uh, <coughs> for for us to understand where the homeroom guidance is coming from of course you need to uh, understand its philosophy. At ano ba ang, saan ba nang gagaling yung mga nag ng homeroom guidance? O ang homeroom guidance per se? <coughs> homeroom guidance believes that every learner is unique and has the ability to develop him or herself using his or her own learning and experiences from family, community, school, and society. This shall be realized through the collaborative efforts of family, school, community, government, and other institutions. Uh, I would like to unpack this a little bit. No? Uh, siya sabi lang natin dito that every learner is unique. Uh, may kanya-kanya silang potential, may kanya-kanya silang pagkatao. And has the ability to develop. Of course, we are not looking at learners as tabula rasa. Of course, they have abilities to develop themselves or to learn from their experiences, okay? At yun ay nanggagaling sa family, community, school, and society. At alam natin na hindi natin ito kakayanin na mag-isa lang sa DepEd. We need the help of family, school, community, government, and other institutions. So ito po yung 
uh, saligang paniniwala ng homeroom guidance no? in terms of why we have to uh, conduct homeroom guidance. So what about the end product of homeroom guidance? Siya sabi natin that homeroom guidance is actually complementing the K-12 uh, overall goal, no? which is holistically develop Filipinas with 21st century skills. Uh, in the context of homeroom guidance, it is actually to produce holistically developed Filipinas. Ano ibig sabihin natin ng holistically developed Filipinas pagdating sa homeroom guidance? Sila yung mga bata na that who can achieve academic success, demonstrate healthy behavior, exemplify positive disposition, and systematically plan for their future or their future. Ang sinasabi lang natin na tayo ay nagko-contribute sa K-12 a goal by having these things achieve academic success uh, demonstrate healthy behavior exemplify positive disposition and systematically plan for their future so it shall produce learners who can work for the common good of society while upholding the international standards so siya sabi lang natin na lahat ito ay para sa ikabubuti ng lipunan at alinsunod sa international standards <coughs> okay, now, uh, paano natin gaga makukuha or how do we go, how are we going to attain the vision? Of course, we have the mission. This is the how. No? So, Home Room Guidance is dedicated to address the academic, personal, social, and career development needs of the learners in a developmental, comprehensive, and proactive manner. Meaning to say, uh, makakamit natin yung vision na yun o yung tunguhin na yun. Uh, kung i-address natin yung academic needs ng bata and this pertains to uh, the study habits, the academic uh, uh, academic attitude of the learners, the learning styles, etc. Et no? Of course, personal and social issues. If we address those things, for instance, yung bullying, uh, sex, sexual confusion, sexuality confusion rather, uh, overcoming bullying, uh, romantic relationship, uh, sibling rivalry, and many more. No? And of course, career development. If we need, we need to address the career needs of our learners by informing them and letting them experience such realization uh, for them to choose whatever career track or strand they, they want to go. And we are doing this in a developmental. Pag sabi developmental, meaning to say kinder to grade 12, inaalalayan natin ang mga bata o kabataan. Comprehensive in such a way that we address the, uh, the different domains no, that I have mentioned already and proactive because we are equipping them with life skills that they can use for their uh, life, no? <coughs> okay, now, in a nutshell, this is how it looks like. So, yung, yung curriculum framework natin, of course, we always, in, in many of the curriculum works that we did, no? We always consider the needs of the learners. Hindi natin pwedeng ipag, walang bahala yan, no? Yung, yung nag-raise ng hand, I will address that later ha, after my talk. Maybe you can just chat your question so you won't forget that. Okay? Uh, needs of the learners, Philippine society, and global society. So these are the things that, uh, that we look into and accounted for during the crafting of this uh, curriculum. Of course, we have the legal basis. Everything has to be legal, right? So, especially that we are in the public service. So, we have the 1987 Constitution, the RA 10533, RA 9155, etc. And of course, a different debt and issue one says. We are also guided by the theoretical basis in terms of the three domains. Uh, we have Crumbolt, Super, and Ginsburg, 
for career development, good nurse, scaffolding, of course, this is being used for academic domain. Erickson psychosocial development theory, this is for the personal social domain, most especially the developmental crisis of each learner. And uh, Rousseau's learners, learner centered theory, this is for academic domain, and PJ's cognitive learning theory, this is for cognitive domain. So, having this basis, we now came up with the homeroom guidance, ito po nakita niyo sa gitna, which has three domains so the academic development domain. Uh, my then, sorry, I have to mute someone because I'm not distracted. Ayan. So we have the academic development domain. We have the personal and social development domain and the career development domain. As you can see, continuous po yung arrow. Why? Because it is a lifelong learning process. No, kahit tayong adults. We still learn. We still need to get into graduate school. We still attend seminars. We still uh, undergo workshops to really feed our academic or even cognitive faculties. No. We also yeah. Uh, May I ask everyone to be mindful of their mics no para hindi po tayo na distract. All right. Uh, another thing is yung uh, career development domain. Of course, uh, our learners need to understand how and where to go. Uh, and that means that we need to equip them with the right information, with the right learning opportunities for them to realize ano ba talaga ang gusto nila. Okay, of course, the personal and social development domain, these are the things that we always have. No? For instance, uh, our view about life, about our friends, about um, maybe personal issues. Okay, so kung napapansin po ninyo, even as adults, no, we, are, we also have these domains to address. Of course, uh, ang sakop lang natin ay basic education, kaya hanggang grade 12 lang. And these uh, domains should be collaboratively addressed by home, community, and other institutions, and school. Yung community and other institutions, medyo limited tayo kasi nga walang face-to-face. -face. So ang nangyayari lang, home and school lang talaga for now. But yung iba, with the help of LGU, natutulungan din sila. So nagkakaroon ng collaboration. And for us, we are doing this for us to have a holistically developed Filipinos. And I, and I already articulated how we contextualize our, uh, our definition of holistically developed Filipinos. So, so sabi natin ang homeroom guidance, kaya yan nagsisimula sa kinder hanggang grade 12. It is a comprehensive developmental and proactive program that has standards and competencies that cut across all grade levels. <clears throat> the competency indicators are arranged from simple to complex and focus on the development of higher order thinking, such as analyzing and evaluating concepts, processes, procedures, and principles rather than just remembering. So these are the theories for academic domain. Okay, I, I won't be discussing that because uh, these are uh, relevant theories that I know that you already encountered. no? Uh, and I discussed it before, uh, yung unang salbo ng ating orientation. Uh, I have a different focus now. So, of course, the personal and social domain and the career development domain. Actually, sa career guidance program, we are looking at the theory of crumbles as well, no? At of course, magnapakaganda ng theory ni James Birds uh, sa career development, and maybe in the future or in the orientation that we will have, uh, we will uh, try to elucidate more on this. 
So these are the standards. So sinabi natin, it cuts uh, homeroom guidance standards cut across all grade levels. Ang ibig sabihin, itong mga standards na ito ay the same from kinder to grade 12. Okay? So mula sa understanding level hanggang sa developing academic skills to respond to community. Okay, so these are the four domain, uh, four standards under academic domain. So under each standard, there are competencies. Again, standards, then competencies. Okay, so for instance, sa standard one ng academic domain, andyan yung identify the methods sa effective study habits hanggang sa share knowledge, skills, and positive attitude, helpful in lifelong learning. The standard 2, ito din po yung tatlong competencies. Standard 3, ito po yung tatlong competencies. I won't be uh, discussing this in details. Uh, actually, doon sa ating MELPS na nilabas, sa mga naghahanap pala ng MELPS, actually kasama na siyang nailabas ng lahat ng learning area. Okay, uh, yung mga common queries yan actually ng mga regional supervisor, no? at ng division supervisor, kasama na po siyang nailabas ng mga learning areas. So, hindi po siya kahi, nahi, uh, what? hindi po siya separated. Okay? So, these are the standards under personal social domain. Understand the importance of oneself and others hanggang sa enrich ability to share oneself to respond to international standards. So, this standard has four competencies. Standard 2 has three competencies. Okay. Yan. So, ito din po yung ikaapat na standard with four competencies. For, for the standards for career domain, we also have four standards. No, From understanding the importance of knowledge, skills, and positive attitude helpful to daily living, hanggang sa implement steps toward the realization of chosen profession and vocation based on international standards. Okay, now, uh, so this uh, under standard one ng career domain, we have two competencies, identified factors related to life and profession. Kung napapansin nyo, paano ang gagawin ng kinder yan? Okay. So mamaya ipapakita ko sa inyo kung paano pa siya bini-break into a uh, key stage. Okay? Explain the significance of knowledge and skills needed in life and profession. So kung napapansin nyo, ha, I want you to be mindful of on how the competencies are stated here. Medyo broad siya. Okay? Standard competencies. At kung na, by now, I think you are realizing that we're not following the template of the regular curriculum guide. Kasi sa regular curriculum guide, mag-uumpisa ka lagi sa content, content standard, performance standard, uh, learning competencies, di ba? So tayo, nagsimula tayo sa standard, then competencies. So this is the standard two with four competencies. Third standard with three competencies. And fourth standard with for competencies. So, sir, paano siya na i-break into key stage? Kasi hinati natin siya eh. Uh, we have competencies for kinder, then for uh, primary level, we have a uh, curriculum guide for them. At isa lang yun. And then intermediate, we also have that. And then for high school, for junior high school and senior high school, uh, for, for junior high school rather, grade 7 to 10, iisa ang curriculum guide. Ganun din ang senior high school. So kung napapansin nyo, I want you to really focus on this para hindi kayo masyadong, para pag tinanong kayo ng inyong mga colleagues, ay nasasagot mo sila. So we have the standard here. We have the competency. And then yung competency, binrake siya into smaller tidbits. We have the competency indicators. So under one competency, may tatlong competency indicators. Okay, again, this is for grades 4 to 6. Sir, paano yan? Bakit naman similar sa 4 to 6? Okay, again, itong...
ginagawa nun. Yung third and fourth, uh, kinuha ko ng BLR yun. So, yung, yung melts natin, uh, bawat, kung napansin nyo, bawat topic ay may nakalagay na week, no? Or bawat, uh, uh, may mga pagkakataon na yung competency indicators ay naka week 3, week 4, no? Pero may mga pagkakataon na na kinocondense or uh, dito, pinagsasama, lalo na kung same domain sila. Definitely kapag magkaibang domain, hindi natin pwedeng pagsamahin. Halimbawa, yung career domain at saka yung personal and social domain, hindi yung pwedeng pagsamahin. Pero kung ang competency indicators ay parehas na sa career domain, then pwede yung pagsamahin. For instance, ito. Uh, yung melts natin is to determine the importance of oneself as part of the family and community, exhibit self-discipline, manage personal changes towards self-appreciation. So ano yung mga learning objectives niya? So uh, naglagay tayo ng tatlong learning objectives just to address these things. And then uh, the learning objectives had to be translated or had to be tracked doon sa mga activity ng homeroom guidance module. Una, yung let's try this. Ano yung let's try this? This is for uh, learning uh, for objective one. <coughs> Basically, ito yung uh, motivation. Ano? And then yung learning objective two na nakita siya sa you can do it. This is the main activity. And then doon sa what I have learned, ito yung sa evaluation part. Uh, then yung let's explore this. Uh, ito yung nandoon sa uh, application part. no? And then kaya ina-address niya yung objective number three. And then yung objective one to three, sa keep in mind, ito yung lecturette part. Pag sabing lecturette part, ito yung mini discussion about the topic. Practical discussion. Kung napapansin nyo, kung nakita nyo na yung mga module, uh, ginawa natin practical sa mga bata at hindi very academic ang dating. No? Para naman hindi nila ma-feel na parang, uh, ano ba ito, parang ano din, parang I have to, I have to digest each. Ang sabi lang natin, these are practical applications of what they have, what they can actually do. So dun sa let's try this, kung napansin nyo, at andito yung module, yung let's try this motivation, no? kung napansin nyo, ito yun, may instruction tayo. And then, yung uh, you can do it, this is the main activity. Remember ha, from the motivation, which is uh, let's try this, pupunta ang bata sa main activity na you can do it. Okay? Kasi hindi pwedeng, hindi pwedeng main activity agad. Alam nyo naman sa learning curve, dapat lagi nag-start sa motivation to entice or to engage the student. Then from the main activity, we have, uh, of course, after ng main activity, nandun yung lecturette or yung sabing keep, keep, keep in mind. And then after nun, uh, what I have learned, this is the uh, evaluative portion of the module. Okay? And then yung let's explore this. This is the application part. So we already evaluated what they have learned. And then we let them apply what they learned. Okay? Dito sa let's explore this. Kung napansin nyo may mga suggested time allotment. Kaya yung suggested just to uh, to promote flexibility kasi nga alam naman natin na hindi pa yan hindi lahat ay nasa uh, hindi lahat ay the same ang pacing. Okay? And then naglagay tayo ng uh, gabay sa magulang. Kung napansin nyo nakatagalog o Pilipino po yung gabay sa magulang to be, to be inclusive. So ito po binabasa dapat to ng magulang para alam niya kung paano niya tutulungan yung kanyang anak o ang kanyang sudyante. Mula kinder hanggang grade 12, may ganito po tayo. At sa kinder to grade 3, dahil hindi pa yan masyado nakakabasa, mahalaga na basahin sa kanila ng, ng magulang o ng nearest adult nila na nakakabasa, syempre. 
Okay, so I think that would be all for my part. Uh, thank you so much. And I hope uh, you will implement the homeroom guidance properly this school year 2021 to 2022. Salamat po. Hello, magandang umaga po sa inyong lahat. Simeo Inatek uh, is very honored to be part of this National Orientation and Career Guidance Program. On behalf of Inatek, uh, I would like to congratulate the Bureau of Curriculum Development for organizing this National Orientation. I am here to provide an overview of the knowledge resources and career guidance for grade 10 that we jointly develop with BCD to support DepEd's learning continuity plan in this time of pandemic. So this morning, I will present the MCDP resources, which stands for Multiple Career Development Pathways, as well as the recently developed uh, video on senior high school tracks and strengths, and how these resource materials can support the implementation of DepEd's career guidance program for this is school year 2021 to 2022. In a short while, I will talk about Senior in Tech, the MCDP Toolkit, the explainer video on Senior High School tra Tracks and Strands, how we develop these knowledge products, uh, the key features and components of these resources, and where to access these resource materials. And for those who who are not yet aware of Simio or the Southeast Asian Ministers of Education Organization, uh, this is an umbrella organization of 11 ministries of education in Southeast Asia. It has 26 specialized institutions uh, located in 10 countries in Southeast Asia that undertake uh, training and research programs uh, in various fields of education, science, and culture. The highest policy making body is the Simio Council, which is composed of the education ministers. In this council, the Philippines is, rep is represented by Deputy Secretary uh, Leonor Briones. And each regional center has a governing board composed of senior education officials from the 11 education ministries. Inotech, or the uh, regional center for educational innovation and technology is dedicated to identifying common and unique education problems in Southeast Asia and developing innovative and technology-based solutions to address these problems. So why did Simio Inotech develop the MCDP toolkit? The Enhanced Basic Education Act of 2013 has ushered a massive reform in the Philippine uh, Department of Education. It introduces the K-12 curriculum that aims to expand and improve the delivery of basic education in the country. And one of the hallmarks of the K-12 education reform is the institutionalization of the senior high school program, which broadened the goals of secondary education. And as stipulated in, uh, in Basic Education Act, specifically in Section 17, uh, the senior high school program aims to properly guide the students uh, toward becoming productive and contributing individuals through informed career choices and to develop the capability of career counselors and advocates to guide students and equip them with necessary life skills and values. Also, as stated in uh, Section 18, it aims to guide secondary level students in choosing the career tracks that they intend to pursue. Acknowledging that there are not enough guidance counselors in public high schools, uh, Inutec assisted DepEd by developing a, a resource that will aid classroom teachers who are serving as career advocates to guide students, uh, beginning with grade 10 learners, in making sound and informed career choices to guide them in selecting the appropriate tracks as they register for the senior high school program. The MCDP toolkit in particular provides teachers and career guidance advocates with basic tools and techniques in conducting career coaching activities for grade 10. 
It consists of uh, career planning activities and assessment tools to help learners determine the available career options and identify possible pathways to reach their life goals. This is primarily designed for teachers as career advocates and learners, uh, but also, also accessible, no? applicable for school heads and parents. It will help students uh, gather information about themselves, uh, about the labor market, educational institutions, and people around them to make informed choices about possible career pathways. It helps them identify possible senior high school tracks and strengths and explore various uh, career pathways and study plans to achieve their life goals. And how did uh, Simio Initech develop the toolkit? We presented the concept paper in 2016 to the Office of the Undersecretary, who was on top of the DepEd Senior High School and Career Guidance Program in DepEd. We also consulted the Youth Formation Division when the CGP was transferred to the Bureau of Learning Sports Services. The center conducted a series of consultations with career guidance and counselors from the academe, like USD and De La Salle uh, State University. Uh, and private organizations such as Career Development Association of the Philippines, Philippine Gu Guidance Counseling Association, also education.ph. And we consulted the uh, technical experts from government representatives from uh, the DepEd, TESDA, CHED, DOLE, uh, the technical vocational education and training expert. Uh, or individual consultants, and even the Professional Regular Regulation Commission. And at the school level, we conducted focus group discussions with uh, San Pedro Relegation Center National High School. Uh, this is an Inutech partner school. Uh, we uh, discussed with teachers, learners, parents, and school head. And, uh, the FGD results reveal the following perceptions of uh, high school teachers. According to them, career guidance does is an additional load, uh, and, the, and, and teachers should be equipped before undertaking the crucial task and should find time to conduct the sessions. Teachers need a simple and easy to use source material on career guidance. Schools should provide required materials for CGP sessions and activities. And in the Philippine setting, uh, family is one of the major deciding factors in choosing a career. Using a career portfolio will help students in making good career decisions. And this was followed by uh, drafting of tools, materials, and session guides. Uh, Think, uh, yes, we top experts and uh, a technical working group uh, to review the toolkit following the key principles of developmental guidance and counseling. And uh, lastly, the, the last step, the toolkit was pilot tested prior to its finalization. And the pilot testing was uh, done in two schools uh, in different contexts. One in the province of Laguna at San Pedro Education Center National High School and another in Manila. We piloted the toolkit at uh, Rajas uh, Suleiman of Suleiman Science and Technology High School. Uh, we administered a survey for teachers and learners, conducted F FGDs with uh, teachers, learners, and parents, and school heads. Uh, they uh, evaluated the uh, MCDP toolkit uh, based on clarity of instruction, appropriateness to career planning, ease of use and reproduction, organization or structure, and usefulness in choosing a senior high school track and strength. All the respondents validated uh, that the MCDP toolkit is a valuable tool for career decision making for grade 10 and majority of teachers and students strongly agreed on the effectiveness of the mcdp toolkit they also like the fact that the toolkit is uh, light reading and easy to use hence the overall recommendation uh, was to use mcdp toolkit 
as a supplemental resource material for grade 10 students. And what are the salient features of the MCDP toolkit? Uh, this toolkit is a simple and concise career planning material. It can be used uh, out of sequence or on demand basis. The teacher can start in any activity that uh, are applicable to the level of abilities of the students. It highlights that uh, career planning is an iterative or continuing process which can be repeated in other planning stage or grade levels. And the tools and materials are easy to reproduce. The toolkit is uh, only around 50 pages back to back. And also it empowers teachers as career advocates, uh, the most important thing. Please note that the use of the tools depends on the teacher's assessment of the student's level of readiness. They can develop their own session guides and teachers can identify their own strategies in using the toolkit. It could be delivered in two sessions uh, or three sessions, four or five or so on, depending on the assessment of teachers uh, in terms of the, uh, the required time duration. And the MCDP toolkit has four components. Uh, there is this quick uh, summary guide uh, for career advocates. There are a set of activities and tools, specific set of instructions per activity. We call the activity guides and sample session guides developed by the teachers themselves. The assessment tools uh, contained in the toolkit uh, this aim to help students achieve the career development pathways or outcomes as outlined in this matrix. And as you see, for each learning outcome or learning objective, there are recommended set of tools uh, that career advocates may use. This matrix uh, shown here will guide you as career guidance advocates in planning and facilitating the CGP activities with your students. And uh, for component two, the toolkit uh, features an introduction and four main activities. And as, you, as listed here, there are 13 tools, different tools that can aid students on career planning to achieve their goals for employability and career success. Uh, the introduction part focuses on envisioning, identifying goals that give the students a sense of direction. Um, for activity one, uh, yeah. e, this guides the students uh, to discover and rediscover themselves and to better understand their interests, talents, and values. Activity two uh, will help guide students in identifying possible senior high school track and related career options uh, based on their interests, talents, and uh, values. Activity three uh, will provide the factors to consider in choosing a career. Uh, this includes the reality or the actual skills requirements for a certain career uh, as a factor you know, to be considered. Students will also be asked to respond to questions like, do I have the necessary skills for my chosen career? What skills do I need to develop or improve on? Can my family afford to send me to school? Or can my family afford the course I want to, I want to take? Activity four is about putting all the pieces of information together and finally coming up with prospective career options, beginning with a preferred senior high school track. The MCDP start contrast to other CGP modules that it presents new uh, rele or relevant tools uh, like the career wheel, uh, my family and my career choices and career path pathways portfolio. Uh, these are tools uh, which were found to be necessary uh, by the teachers themselves uh, during the pilot testing, the learners and the parents during the yeah, the, the validation and tryout phase. Okay, so that's the set of activities and tools. 
uh, this table uh, shows the uh, the comparative uh, CGP activities as conducted by the pilot schools. Uh, it compares the common and different activities from the DepEd CGP manual for grade 10 and the MCDP toolkit. And as applied in the uh, San Pedro uh, Relocation Center National High School, they try to use the MCDP toolkit in a pure and blended approach. Uh, some teachers uh, use the MCDP toolkit uh, in the pure sense, and others use the combined activities and tools from the MCDP toolkit, and some were taken from the DepEd's uh, CGP manual uh, developed in 2015 for grade 10. Uh, a sample here, tool number five, as, uh, which is encircled, the career wheel, uh, shows that uh, it can be used in examining the destinations in terms of tracks or, or strands or car career pathways of students. Uh, other new tools include, uh, as, as encircled here, tool number six, my family and my career choices. This will be used for goal setting and grounding or examining the destinations with the participation of parents or guardians or caregivers, because culturally speaking, they are important stakeholders in their children's career decision-making. Another tool that is uh, encircled here is the Career Pathways uh, Portfolio uh, or tool number 10. And tool number 13 are the for the MCDP um, career map. Uh, this can be used to, to connect the dots or which refers to the, to the information gathered from the different activities and from the filling up of the forms of the or the tools. Uh, it will connect the uh, the different uh, assessment. Uh, results between education and career pathways or charting your own course uh, with the students. Okay, another sample activities and tools uh, listed here is the activity or on exploring career pathways. So for this activity, teachers as career advocates will use tool number five. Uh, which is named as Senior High School Career Interest Clusters and also the Career Wheel. This tool presents uh, six uh, career clusters or groups of jobs or groups of occupations that require similar skills or shared on common characteristics. Students will be asked to choose a career cluster that best describes their inclinations, interests, and, ab and abilities. Uh, by shading the uh, statements uh, listed under each cluster that they think will apply to themselves. And after completing the assessment tool on career interest clusters uh, that was previously shown, students will be able to uh, discover the cluster that applies to them. In this example, uh, the cluster with the greatest number of shaded statements corresponds to cluster B. Uh, or the sports track, uh, as uh, shaded here in red. This means that the student is inclined or has the aptitude for sports. You or she may also choose a uh, cluster D, uh, shaded uh, red, uh, or the accountancy, business, and management as another senior high school track option. Uh, now let's go to the career wheel. Uh, as shown in this slide, uh, this wheel this tool will help uh, students decide on a future career and uh, a prospective senior high school track. The career wheel displays the different uh, career pathways and related senior high school tracks and strands. And there are different ways of using the career wheel. One way is to look at the outer circle for a prospective career choice and then trace its corresponding senior high school track and strand. For example, if the student is interested in becoming an engineer, one of the options is to take the senior high school uh, academic track, particular, particularly the STEM strand. 
Another way to use the wheel is to focus on the track or the strand as, uh, by, by locating uh, the second or third circle. That, uh, this means that students are more, this uh, shows that where students are most inclined to, and then uh, they will just trace what career options are available for them after senior high school or college. And for example, if a student is inclined to take up the arts and design track, he or she may work as a draftsman or illustrator after senior high school or put up a drafting or business shop. And upon completion uh, of college, some career options that are available for him or her uh, include uh, being an architect or an interior designer. Yeah, that's just one example. Uh, for tool number six, uh, which uh, refers to my family and my career choices, uh, this will be used for goal setting and grounding activity. This will require the participation of parents and or guardians or caregivers to determine their own perception and desired uh, career path and expectations for their children. This activity will help parents uh, realize if their chosen career or expectations would match with the personal choice, interests, and abilities of their children and vice versa. And after responding to the reflection guide listed in this tool, uh, or tool number six, a dialogue between the parent and the child is encouraged. It is important to discuss uh, what they have discovered, share their answers on the questions, and arrive at an agreement and discuss the needed support from parents in case uh, a common decision has, has been made no, on the student's career plan or career choice. Uh, each of the four main activities has a corresponding activity guide. Here is a sample activity guide, activity four, uh, to, which is about connecting the dots between education and career pathways. Uh, this is an integration activity uh, wherein students are expected to develop their own career, career pathways portfolio and career study planner. They must put all the pieces of information together by completing the last four assessment tools so they can finally come up with prospective career options, beginning with the preferred senior high school track. And uh, there are sample session guides uh, that were developed and used by teachers during the pilot stage. And these are found in Annex section of the MCDP Toolkit. Um, if you have a copy, it starts with page 47. The sample session guides are presented for each of the five main activities. And these can be used during your career planning session with students or use these as reference in modifying or developing your own session guides. The MCDP Toolkit is available for download yeah, so on here on the DepEd LRMDS and also at the Inutex website. And yeah, now uh, let's go to the uh, other knowledge resource, the recently developed MCDP explainer video. We also have repackaged the toolkit into a six part explainer video series. And it has an editable PowerPoint deck featuring the, the same activities and tools uh, available at the uh, printed toolkit so that uh, teachers may use and customize them based on uh, learners' needs. And both resources are also available at the Inotex website. So why did we develop the explainer video on senior high school tracks and strands? Um, upon the turnover of the MCDP explainer video series, DEP at BCD requested for continuing technical support to each uh, CGP 
program uh, through the development of a supplementary explainer video on DepEd senior high school tracks and strands. As the uh, BCD puts it, uh, learning resources in video format have been proven effective in reaching out to more learners, especially during these challenging times uh, when face-to-face -face classes uh, is prohibited. The explainer senior explainer video aims to support the effective cascading of the senior high school program in the fields, especially uh, uh, during uh, distance learning uh, implementation uh, under the DepEd's basic uh, learning continuity plan. Okay. Sorry. The explainer video on senior high school tracks and strands uh, aims to widely disseminate the DepEd senior high school tracks and strands during career guidance orientations like this one for the incoming senior high school students um, and also for their parents. So what is this all about? This is a 34-minute explainer video um in filipino to ensure attainment of a wider reach to include learners parents and other school community stakeholders it was designed for uh grade 10 learners and and their parents and it may be used as a supplementary resource material by teachers career guidance advocates uh, guidance counselors and the program supervisors uh, during uh their orientation activities uh, in relation to career guidance and counseling. So how did we develop this uh, video? Um, in starting February 2021, the PEDVCD has identified the development of a supplementary explainer video that provides a comprehensive overview of the senior high school tracks and strands, curriculum exits, and potential careers as a helpful complementary effort for the career guidance program. And in a series of consultation meetings, Inotech and DEP and BCD uh, agreed to use uh, the Filipino language and, uh, and agreed on the content and design of the explainer video. And in March 2021, Inotech developed uh, the explainer video and we approved the by approving the provision of joint technical assistance uh, with BCD through the Educational Media Unit and Educational Innovation Unit of the Center. So to jointly, we, uh, we developed the, the explainer video anchored on the script uh, that was uh, actually written no, by the technical team of the BCD. And in June 2021, DepEd BCD accepted the senior high school video and officially rolled out uh, each pilot version to the dip, to the DepEd regional offices. And while waiting for the official uploading of the senior high school video to the LRMDS, uh, BCD has widely disseminated the video through uh, different channels, most accessible to the CGP uh, field implementers for their immediate use. No? Uh, for their uh, grade 10 CGP orientations. And they conducted it just before the end of the school year 2020 to 2021. Uh, we also conducted uh, a user feedback assessment huh? uh, uh, to help us gather comments and suggestions from the intended and, and expanded users uh, of the explainer video. And, uh, and we use the data gathered uh, as basis for the further enhancement of the video. So we conducted this rapid assessment uh, by way of uh, conducting a half day FGD with learners and their parents uh, last August 6, no? 2021. And then we also conducted a nationwide online quick survey among teachers, uh, career guidance advocates, uh, guidance counselors, 
and program su supervisors, uh, which ran from August 2023 20, 20, to September 10 uh, this year. And we are yet to finalize the user feedback rapid assessment, but uh, allow us to present to you the initial findings. So the FGD was uh, particip participated in by a total of 18 uh, uh, participants comprising of nine uh, pairs of per parents and learners uh, from the school's division of Camarines Norte, uh, school's division of Tacloban City, and Davao del Norte. So that's uh, to represent Luzon, Visayas, and Mindanao. And for more details, a total of 9,416 survey responses came in through the online quick survey. And uh, however, after data cleaning, uh, uh, we removed responses who did not uh, give their consent. So the valid responses we received were reduced to 7,199. Geographically, uh, all regions uh, were represented uh, with regions one and three with the highest number of responses at 18% and 17% uh, respectively. And in terms of respondents profile, uh, out of the uh, 7,199 online responses, 69% are teachers, 23% are school career guidance advocates, and 6% are, are school guidance counselor. Less than 1% constitute the division and regional guidance counselors and program supervisors. And the user assessment uh, was based on three uh just three major uh indicators no? or variables the first one is the design and structure uh we we asked the parent uh yeah we asked the respondents to um rate the the video in terms of uh design and structure uh, with the following uh, sub-indicators, organization and structure, time allotment, transitions, production, and video format. The second uh, cr uh, criteria is on content and messaging, uh, which is based on the, the following sub-indicators, content, engagement, quality, clarity, and appropriateness. And the third is on usefulness and impact. Uh, which is uh, focused on senior high school tracks and strands, career planning, and complementation. We also asked the respondents uh, whether they recommend the use of DepEd's uh, explainer video as a medium to inform grade 10 learners and their parents about senior high school tracks and strands. And what are the findings? Uh, based on the responses, 100% of the participants have agreed that um, the statements above uh, pertaining to the identified indicators uh, of, a, of a quality explainer video, um, except for the sub-indicator under content and messaging, of, which is quality. Uh, the senior high school video presentation of images, uh, graphics, and text or captions are, are clear and in focus. Uh, the voice and music used are audible, which receive 89% or 16 out of the uh, 18 participants uh, of the FGD who said yes. And two out of the 18 participants said no. Uh, the two participants who said no were both students. Mm -hmm. And overall, uh, the respondents consistently affirmed the design that the design and structure of the senior high school video are presented in an organized, clear, and logical manner. They also acknowledge the explainer video can hold the viewer's attention and that the production and the video format are appropriate and accessible to all learners. 
And in terms of content and messaging, uh, most respondents uh, strongly agree that the desired and overall objectives and message of the MCDP uh, toolkit or video were effectively and appropriately presented uh, in the video format. In terms of usefulness, majority of the respondents strongly agree that the explainer video is found as a useful explainer video to effectively present the senior high school tracks and strands. They strongly agreed that the explainer videos uh, serves as a supplementary and complementary resource uh, for career planning uh, for use by learners and their parents, as well as for career advocates uh, teachers, program supervisors, and guidance counselors. A high 98.59% or out of the 7,199 online respondents said that they would recommend the explainer video as a medium to inform grade 10 learners and their parents about the senior high school tracks and strengths. General, the explainer video is being recommended uh, as a supplementary resource material to orient uh, incoming senior high school students and their parents on the various uh, senior high school tracks and strands to support uh, the learners' career planning and, and development. The pilot version may be further enhanced for future rollout uh, based on the feedback, comments, and suggestions submitted by uh, respondents. The uh, explainer video may be viewed from one of the DepEd uh, BCD's YouTube channels, and this will be uh, available uh, on the LRMDS upon DepEd BCD's advice. And to sum up, the MCDP toolkit and the explainer video on senior high school tracks and strands were developed in cooperation with DepEd. Hence, uh, we are confident that these uh, knowledge resources are well designed and suited for you, uh, career guidance advocates, uh, to enable uh, our grade 10 learners uh, develop their own uh, individual career plan and their own career portfolio and eventually make informed uh, career choices no? uh, for their future. Remember the MCDP toolkit and the uh, senior high school experience video um, do not intend to be prescriptive tools. They intend to serve as guides and references to help students together with you, uh, teachers, as career guidance advocates, family, and community to make better career choices and decisions that are crucial for developing a more vibrant economy in, uh, in their respective communities or in your respective communities. The career choices they will make uh, will hopefully be the ones that can greatly contribute to the socio-economic development of our country. So if you have any questions, uh, please feel free to send us an email. You know? And please send this uh, to Yoli and to Emmy, uh, uh, Ms. Emmy Domingo as the project manager for this uh, uh, knowledge resource development. With that, marami pong salamat and I'm wishing you all success no, in your CGP activities. Bye! Good morning. Today, I will discuss the Career Guidance Program for school year 2021-2022. This is under the DMOUCI 347 Series of 2021. 
So the career guidance for school year 2021-2022 is not really a new program. What we are doing right now is the reorientation and updating of the career guidance program that we started in 2020. Now, um, we will uh, look into the different term terminologies that we used in this particular department memorandum. First and foremost, we defined career guidance program. So the career guidance program is designed to help learners explore their choice Good morning. Today, I will discuss the career guidance program for school year 20. After graduation leading to an associate or bachelor's degree. This is also referred to as tertiary education, college degree, or post-secondary education. We also define here employment. So employment is one of the curriculum exits which senior high school learners may opt to pursue. A paid work or job. This is also referred as occupation. 
Also, you can find in the DM the definition of entrepreneurship. So entrepreneurship is one of the curriculum exits which senior high school learners may opt to pursue after graduation, leading to developing, organizing, and managing one's own business venture. Also, we have the middle-level skills development, one of the curriculum exits which senior high school learners may opt to pursue after graduation, leading to further training in technical vocational education. So sa madaling salita, we define the curriculum exits as well as the other terminologies that you can find so that it will be clearer for you and it will be easier for all of us to understand the content of this DM. So why did DepEd issue this document? No? Kahit na pandemia, bakit meron pa rin tayong career guidance program? So first, we need to ensure the continuity of the career development process. So the career development process should not stop. No? We should also um, employ a systematic set of activities and procedures in the implementation of the career guidance program. And establish support mechanisms that contribute to the attainment of the department's career guidance program. As you can see, um, career guidance program, um, yung pinaka background niya, the one that was discussed by uh, Mr. Bercando earlier, ni Sir Mark, um, meron siyang mga basis. And uh, we cannot just um, ignore those uh, policies that was issued in relation to career guidance. No? So we can find career guidance in the K-12 um, basic education curriculum or the uh, RA-10533 and the RA-11206, the career guidance and counseling um, act okay, of 2019. For my presentation, I will be following this order. So I will uh, discuss the Career Guidance Program or the CGP that includes some protocols on the CGP orientation, the available materials, the CGP portfolio, and the career counseling and consultation, as well as the curriculum exit tracking system. I will also discuss the roles and responsibilities of each program implementer in the different level of governance. So in school, who's in charge, in the division, in the region, and in the national level. Also, we, I, we included other provisions, specifically on budget allocation and implementation of career guidance program, and the monitoring and evaluation. So let's start with the career guidance program. The first element or component of the career guidance program for this school year is what we call the career guidance orientation. So the career guidance orientation aims to provide relevant information on the procedures and activities related to the career guidance program. Katulad ng ibang mga programa na ipinatutupad natin sa Department of Education. It is very important that we hold orientations. Hindi natin sila bibiglain, especially our learners, sa pagbababa ng mga activities in relation to this program. They need to be oriented. No? So as you can see in the DM, we have a... Uh, we have a schedule. We have a specific schedule for each level of governance for the orientation. So our target, which it, it didn't happen, that we will have or that we should have done the September 24 orientation for the national level orientation, no? Medyo na coincide siya sa mga orientation in relation to homeroom guidance. So we need to adjust the schedule. So the national orientation, ngayon pa lang natin ginagawa, October 1. 2021. And then after this, it is expected that our regional and division orientation as well as the school orientation will be provided. No, So in relation to this, 
we would like to ask the help of our um, ESP supervisors in the regional and division level, ayan, to possibly uh, also have the, their respective orientations. No? So it could be an online orientation or depending on the preferred platform of each uh, division. Um, our target is to reach our parents and learners more um also our career advocates our guidance counselors in relation to this uh, particular program next we also have the uh, learning materials under the career guidance program so this is really important that we uh we know which materials should be um utilized in each particular grade level okay for kindergarten to junior high school we have the career guidance competencies included in the homeroom guidance self-learning modules therefore um kapag gumagawa sila ng modules on homeroom guidance under the homeroom guidance automatic siya kasi embedded yung ating career development domain sa ating homeroom guidance modules. Doon sila talaga makikita. Now, if someone will ask you, ibig sabihin ba nito, the career guidance program uh, can be, uh, kumbaga parang from kindergarten to grade 12? Yes, definitely. Yun nga lang, in our, uh, in our setup right now, we cannot have another set of module for our uh, kinder to junior high school, no? Uh, iba rin kasi yung mga pangangailangan at iba din yung setup or the modalities. So we stick with the homeroom guidance self-learning modules for the meantime, no? But our target for the next years, kung maayos na yung magiging uh, sitwasyon natin, we will also have specific activities, school-based uh, activities or classroom-based activities as well as learning materials that can be utilized by our kindergarten to junior high school. So we also look um, uh, look at it as uh, a future or an endeavor na maaring mangyari no, sa atin, sa Department of Education. We also provided the supplementary materials or the learner's portfolio development video developed by DepEd and Unilab Foundation. So this will be, this can be used by our junior high school. Um, the topic is um, on the uh, career guidance portfolio. Later, after my, uh, after this uh, session, um, kasama din natin ang Unilove Foundation, uh, who will discuss and uh, probably show us uh, a portion of the content of this particular video. And this will be made available to all of you, no, meron tayong uh, port, meron tayong uh, link or uh, Google Drive na paglalagyan nito. So we expect that or the suggested schedule for the uh, implementation or for the supplementary material will be from September 2021 to January 2022. So open naman siya from quarter one to quarter two. And then for grade 10, ito, ito yung medyo mahirap na transition talaga because they make major decisions in their lives, no? So we have uh, partners from Simeo Inotech who joined or collaborated with us in the development of the Multiple Career Development Pathways or the MCDP Toolkit, okay? So this is already available in the DepEd Learning Resource Portal. And uh, you can make use of this from September 2021 to March 2022. We also have the Senior High School Tracks and Strands video developed by DepEd BCD and Simeo Inotech. So this is also included or um, this is available in the DepEd Learning Resource Portal. At meron din siyang YouTube. No? Nasa YouTube din siya. At nasa Simeo Inotech din siya na website. So you can use this quarter one to quarter 
uh, two, no? Why quarter one to quarter two only? Because probably by quarter three, yan, latter part of uh, the school year, they are asked or they are being asked to give their uh, possible tracks and strands or to choose their possible tracks and strands. Yan. So makikita na natin na makakatulong yung mga uh, video na ito for them to realize their potential, their interest, their talents, and also their career interest no? through this. So maganda makikita natin dito uh, the process of discovering oneself, the potentials, and then um, discovering the different options no? in relation to career development. And then for grade 11 and grade 12, we will still adapt the Career Guidance Teacher's Manual for Senior High School. So this is available in the DepEd Learning Resource Portal. And uh, a sample of this can be seen in Annex A, which I will show you later. So for our grade 11 to grade 12, ang kanilang career guidance will start quarter 2 until quarter 4. Okay, so these are just um, activities um, that can be done at home. No, yung mga classroom-based activities, hindi talaga natin siya isinama. Kasi marami dito sa teacher's manual for senior high school ay makapapakinabangan natin kahit na nasa bahay. No? And then we also have the supplementary materials provided by DOLE, DOST, CHED, TESDA, and other partner agencies. So this can be included as a supplementary material for school year 2021-2022. I know some of you do have contacts in uh, with the local um, DOLE or the local PESO. So you can also communicate with them kung meron kayong mga possible na needs in relation to career guidance. No? So later on, we will also meet a person who will discuss the labor market information. She's from the Department of Labor and Employment. This is the sample Annex A. Yan. Uh, we lifted, we actually harvested the activities from the Career Guidance Teacher's Manual for grade 11 and grade 12. So makikita ninyo dyan. We have this, the standard, as well as the competency. These are the career guidance or the career development competencies that we lifted from our homeroom guidance program. No? And then you can see there the module number and title. So, then, dyan naman siya. Alimbawa, sa module one, the title is Road to the Right Choice. So, what are the objectives of this particular? Um, Module, explain the different factors affecting the choices in life and profession, appreciate the factors in choosing a profession, and identify the knowledge and skills needed in the different professions and life choices. So ano yung main activity o yung mga activities na inadapt natin? So halimbawa, you can find on page 2 ang sikreto sa buhay ni Selena. In Appendix 1, you can see there the Activity Sheet 1.1. We also included the page number. And then we also included the Gabay na Tanong, page 83, because they can do this at home. And then the Lecturette, okay, Factors Affecting Career and Life Options on pages 3 to 7. So, paano ba siya binibigay or paano ba yung output na hinihingi natin? Nakastipulate din siya dito sa ating um, learning plan. No? So, we have activity sheet 1.1 which can be found in on page 83 and then activity sheet 1.4 on page 8. So, what are the skills and processes to master? Nakalagay din dyan. So, Self-motivation, critical thinking, decision-making, and knowing and understanding the factors how one makes choices. So this is cre really critical, especially nowadays. No? Kasi ang ano natin dito, ang target natin, magpatuloy pa rin sila sa kanilang pagpaplano. They cannot stop. No? Or else, pagdating ng 
after grade 11 ba ito or after grade 12, masastock na lang ba sila? So we really need to have a uh, continuous support ayan, sa kanilang mga career development processes. Okay? Next, we have the career guidance portfolio. So this is expected, sorry, this is expected um, sa ating mga learners. No? So the career guidance output shall be compiled in the career guidance portfolio. So this must contain the following, accomplished activity sheets, copy of academic grades, assessment results, and activity outputs relevant to career guidance. So you will ask your learners or our learners to have a career guidance portfolio. No? Ito ba ay isasubmit? No? Maaring tanongin, ito ba ay isasubmit? Not necessarily. No? Uh, unless advanced na yung ating, uh, actually barami pang aspect, yung uh, guidance and counseling services that we really need to focus on. No? But the career guidance portfolio, makita natin sana by the end of the school year that they have this, especially for our junior high school and senior high school. Kasi yun yung makakatulong sa kanila in making their decision or in uh, discovering their options. No? Um, when we say assessment results, this could include the uh, NCAE result. No? However, for this year, nakalagay naman siya sa ating school calendar, but we don't have yet the specific schedule uh, as well as the procedures uh, for the NCAE. So we will wait for uh, further announcement regarding the assessment. So for the meantime, yung ilalagay muna natin dyan, Most probably for grade 10, magiging feasible na or magiging magagamit natin yung MCDP toolkit. No? And then, learners may create a physical hard copy portfolio or an electronic soft copy portfolio or e-portfolio. This portfolio will be utilized until they finish senior high school. So why are, why are we doing this portfolio? This is our basis, kagaya nga ng sinabi ko. Hindi tayo magkakaroon ng, kumbaga parang hindi natin sila imbobombard ng napakaraming activity just for nothing. They need to get something out of these activities at yung mga summary na nakukuha natin from the portfolio or the uh, descriptions that we see from the assessments no though hindi yan yung talagang national assessment na na, na magiging basis natin maaring sa taon na ito hindi pa no pero makikita nila kung ano yung mas makakaroon sila ng clear picture kung ano yung nais nilang gawin in the future no or in in that sense para sa senior high school nila hindi ito magiging uh, kumbaga hindi magiging baseless yung kanilang mga decisions no yun ang iniiwasan natin nagayagayahan lang after ng grade 10 kung saan yung kabarkada doon lang pupunta or kung saan yung uh, yung mga ganong factors so that's the that's the main use of our career guidance portfolio later our guest speaker will also um, include in her discussion about the career guidance portfolio. Ayan, mas magkakaroon tayo ng mas malalim na pag-intindi o pag-unawa sa ating career guidance portfolio. Next, letter D, the career counseling and consultation. So, under the career guidance program for school year 2021-2022, we also included the career counseling and consultation. So, ano ba yung pagkakaiba nila? Career counseling is the process of assisting learners with their career development by helping them plan, organize, and decide on their life and career goals. Malawak siya, kasama yung kanyang buhay ano? at yung kanyang career goal. And then, a registered guidance counselor shall conduct career counseling to learners by following the existing ethical and legal provisions for its practice and health and safety standards set by the IATF. No? So for our guidance counselors, depende kung nasaan tayo, um, 
Tingnan natin kung ano yung standards na sineset ng IATF. We know that ang pinaka-effective pa rin when it comes to counseling, yung face-to-face. -face. But uh, hanggat hindi naman inaallow yung face-to-face, -face, what can we uh, do para magkaroon ng career counseling? No? And also, meron din tayong tinatawag na career consultation. So career consultation is the process of assisting learners by providing relevant information about different curriculum exits, courses, specializations, opportunities, and other information that can guide them in selecting their career path. So this may be given preferably by an RGC or a career guidance advocate. No? So meron tayo sa Annex B na procedure in conducting the career consultation. So we will deal with that later. I will explain. Um, bakit tayo may career consultation? We know for a fact that we don't have uh, the uh, desired or the uh, talagang yung number of guidance counselors in each school. No? So magsa-stop ba tayo doon in providing the uh, information services ng uh, guidance and counseling? No. Uh, we can actually give the career consultation even if we are not licensed. However, dapat may kap capacity tayo to do it. How do we capacitate ourselves? Definitely, kailangan nagbabasa tayo at tayo ay may kaalaman din tungkol dito sa iba't ibang impormasyon sa career guidance. No, We cannot tell them na halimbawa if they would like to talk to us or to discuss about the curriculum exits, hindi natin pwedeng sabihin na magbasa ka na lang about curriculum exits. As career advocates, career guidance advocates, we should be ready with those information, no? Okay. So how do we proceed with this career consultation? This can be found in Annex B of this DM. So first, guidance counselors and career guidance advocates provide career consultation services. Malinaw naman siya. Learners should be informed that the school offers career consultation services. So the school should be should provide procedure, schedule, scope, and limitations of this service. No, so if you have your school uh, web page or website, yan, baka pwedeng include nyo na rin siya na merong career consultation that uh, maaring i-avail ng lahat ng learners natin, especially for our grade ten learners, no. And then each session may last from 30 minutes to 60 minutes. So the session includes introduction and building rapport. Definitely, that's how we do it, no? Hindi naman pwedeng, ano kailangan mo? Tapos, o oh, ito na yung mga brochures na kailangan mo, magbasa ka na lang, no? We need to really look into the person, no? Na nangailangan ng service na yun. Asking about the learner's career concerns. Mahalaga yan. Kasi baka minsan... Yung career concerns na hindi naman nire sa atin, yun yung ibigay natin. Baka, baka mapangunahan natin. So we really need to clarify on that. What is their career concern? And then exploring different aspects of the learner's concern. And then we also offer possible sources of information. Dito pa lang yung mga possible sources. So hindi tayo magbibigay ng possible uh, sources or uh, other... Uh, kinds of intervention hanggat hindi natin nakikita kung ano talaga yung pangangailangan in that particular consultation. no? So we offer them possible sources like pamphlet, magazines, brochures, or online resources or articles. So if you are a designated or a career guidance advocate or a career guidance designate, you should be ready with this. At dapat, yung mga resources mo din, mga relevant resources talaga. Hindi siya parang vlog lang or kung ano man na magsasabi. No? That's very dangerous. Sabi ko nga din dito sa kapag ka, meron akong discussion about this, yung mga careers, mga emerging careers, wala namang masama doon sa emerging careers na meron tayo ngayon. Especially yung mga nakikita natin about sa gaming, yung mga ganyan. But um, ang kailangan nating ibigay sa kanila is the whole information or the complete information about these emerging careers. No? Hindi kasi sila automatic. Nakapag gumawa sila rin na halimbawa, one of the emerging careers is itong, uh, itong mga, nag, uh, ano, ng mga video 
nag may, may kinikita na rin sila at hindi lahat ganun yung patutunguhan. So what can we give them? Ayan, what can we give them as a bigger picture and as a clearer idea no, regarding a certain career? So, hindi natin din sila ililid into a certain course or a certain track or strand dahil yun yung interest natin o yun yung uh, nakikita natin na nandun pa rin sana sila sa school if we have senior high school. no? Baka kasi may mga pagbabago pa in their interest. no? So, we give them the complete information. And then, assisting in the creation of action plans or outputs. Huwag ninyong bibitawan yung inyong mga learners hanggat wala siyang um, action plans or outputs. No? Kasi sayang naman yung magiging session ninyo. If you're going to hold a consultation, make sure na meron kayong output. No? May output yung learner. So the career consultation aims to assist learners by equipping them with significant information relevant or related to career development. So this may include the schools. Ayan. So they will be interested. For grade 10, kailangan alam natin sa ating mga divisions, ano yung mga schools available for senior high school na nag offer ng mga tracks and strands. We should be ready with those information. Tapos, scholarships. No? Ano yung mga scholarships? Ano yung mga maari nilang i-avail in case na mga ngailangan sila ng mga scholarships? And then the courses or degree programs. Okay? Magugulat ka sa career consultation upon uh, graduation or bago matapos yung graduation ng grade 10, may mga pinag-iisipan na silang kurso. No? So we, we welcome that. Makikita naman natin yung interest nila. However, uh, halimbawa, yung kurso na gusto nila ay hindi talaga uh, parang, say for example, if they would like to per, uh, pursue engineering, okay? So if they would like to have engineering as a course uh, for the tertiary education at ang gusto nilang exit ay tertiary education, definitely, doon pa lang sa track and strand, subukan na natin ituro sa kanila ano ba yung mga requirements for this particular track or strand para pagdating ng kolehiyo sila ay mapunta doon sa kurso na gusto nila. We also make use of this um career development activities no para mas maklarify sa kanila kung ano yung mga kailangan nilang gawin para makuha nila o ma-achieve nila yung plans nila in relation doon sa kanilang uh, nais na coding kurso o track or strand no and then very important also is the labor market information no So makikita natin dito yung mga trends, makikita natin dito kung ano yung mga possible employment or possible um, yung mga makikita natin na mag, uh, magbuboom. No? Pero may mga ganyan. But we also look into the local, yung mga local um, uh, labor information. Baka may ganun kayo sa inyong respective regions. Kasi yung LMI, medyo malayo pa yan sa kanila. No? Uh, Kung baga, tutulungan pa lang natin sila to realize through the LMI. Pero sa atin, sa ating locality, baka naman makita na din ninyo yung mga trends no? uh, on a particular uh, job market. Baka nandun, nandun lang sa paligid ninyo. So, Baka makatulong tayo in relation to that. Tingnan na natin ano ba yung mga business na meron, ano ba yung mga maari nilang gawin na trabaho, ayan, if they would like to pursue employment after senior high school. Definitely meron yan. Ano? And then, we also have the organizations. No? Uh, eto medyo mahirap, especially now that uh, naka, marami pa rin yung mga hindi talaga natin kakayanin na magkaroon ng face-to-face. -face. But if they manage or the student manages to have an organization, makikita din dito yung kanilang interest. No? So ano yung organizations na sinasalihan nila at ano yung um, baka pwede i-explore din natin ano yung kanilang nakukuha or ano yung kanilang uh, natututuhan from that particular exposure sa mga organizations na yan. And then trainings, we should be open, yan, we should be open with the fact na maraming available trainings. Ayan, yung, kasunod niyan yung skills development and certification. Hindi naman siya limited sa tech book. 
maaring halimbawa, bago rin siya, isa sa mga curriculum exit, yung middle level skills development, kailangan meron din tayong listahan o meron din tayong kaalaman tungkol dito sa mga trainings and skills development and certification. Kasi mahalaga siya. Maaring uh, interest niya ay academic, pero baka meron din siyang mga interest or mga skills na gusto pang i-develop sa kanyang sarili. And then the processes. Mahalaga ito. Um, Remember, when we graduated high school, yung processes pa lang o yung process pa lang ng pag apply sa ating mga colleges and universities, nanganga rin tayo dyan. Lalo kung halimbawa yung school kung saan tayo nang galing ay wala talagang matibay na guidance services on uh, on this, no? Uh, the information services. So, ito rin, isa sa mga mapapakita natin or magagawa natin in our consultation Isibigay din, ano yung process na pagdadaanan nila from grade uh, from grade 10? O, oh, sige, tingnan natin, from grade 9, ano yung mga process papunta sa grade 10, and then sa grade 10, papunta sa senior high school. And then sa senior high school, paano sila doon sa four curriculum exits? Definitely, may iba't ibang... Um, may iba't ibang proseso at dapat as career advocates and guidance counselors and guidance designates we have this familiarization about these processes no uh, good thing sa department of education no we have a uh, kumbaga parang meron tayong mga guided processes through DMs and DOs na binibigay natin okay and then we also have the referrals or linkages no uh, why do we need the referrals or linkages Definitely, we cannot uh, perform everything. No, hindi natin kaya maako pa ma uh, tawag dito, masakop yung kabuuan talaga. No, maaring kailangan natin ng mga partners in relation dito sa ating career guidance program. So we need to know uh, the organizations, the institutions where we can refer our students. No. Or we can link with them. We can uh, establish linkages. Uh, this is very true no, sa ating uh, paghahanap o kaya pagtulong sa kanila kung saan sila maaring, uh, halimbawa, if they would like to have the curriculum exit employment, kailangan talaga natin ng no, mga linkages na yan ng mga business establishment or mga institutions na kayang mag-hire ng ating mga senior high school graduates. Also, the schools, no? You can also have those schools, colleges and universities, um, technical vocational schools uh, to be one of your partners para sa referral and linkages. And then, we need to have, ayan, yung malinaw na kaalaman tungkol sa requirements ng iba't ibang curriculum exits, no? And then, the different career assessment tools. Dapat familiar din tayo dyan, no? So, after this orientation, you may want, ayan, you may want to read the other DepEd orders in relation to assessment and uh, kung ano pa man yung mga kinakailangan uh, for each uh, curriculum exit, no? Okay. So the guidance counselor and career guidance advocate should have a proper documentation of all facilitated career consultations. So ano yung documentation na yan? Okay, na sinasabi natin. Hindi lang siya basta logbook. No? Kinakailangan malinaw kung ano yung naging concern at ano yung ibinigay natin. No? This is our way of establishing a good uh, documentation about our sessions with our learners, no? Kasi hindi tayo, kumbaga parang it's our protection din na hindi tayo babalikan na ito yung sinabi ng career guidance advocate namin or ito yung sinabi ng guidance counselor where in fact you have your um, documentation. So concerns beyond information on career guidance should be handled by a registered guidance counselor or this may be referred to other professionals for further assistance. So malalaman nyo naman yan, dun pa lang sa exploration part, dun sa exploration phase natin kanina, na inaalam ninyo kung ano yung talagang concern, malalaman na din ninyo kung sino yung dapat na i-refer. Kasi beyond information service, yung kayang ibiga, yung kinakailangan ng learner. No? So tandaan natin, pag lumabas na dito sa mga topic na ito, 
na binigay namin from A to letter M, um, most probably kinakailangan na natin siyang i-refer sa ating guidance counselor. No? Okay. So malinaw yan about the career consultation procedure. Now, we also have the curriculum exit tracking system. No? So all schools shall ensure to account all their graduates for school year 2021-2022, including their chosen curriculum exit using the link yeah, you can find on the screen. The list link will be opened two weeks before the school year ends and shall be closed after a month. No? So, kagaya nga nang nakastipulate sa ating DM, hindi pa po ito open. No? So, hindi po kayo maghahanap ng link after this orientation. Bubuksan natin yung link two weeks before the end of the school year. At para kanino lamang siya. Hindi po ito para sa grade 6 or para sa grade 10. Pag tinitingnan na po natin yung curriculum exit, para lamang po ito sa grade 12. No? So malinaw po yan. If you attended this uh, orientation, hindi kayo magahanap ng, ng pag-open ng link ng ganito kaaga. Tinitingnan natin yan by the end of the school year. No? Ibig sabihin nun, Kung nakapili na sila, tapos na rin sila doon sa mga modules and activities na kailangan nilang pagdaanan so that meron na silang idea or may background na din sila about their um, interest and their decisions, possible decisions for the curriculum exit. No? So graduates of grade 12. No? So sinong batch? Kaninong batch? School year 2021-2022. Parang may mga tanong kasi last year, pwede bang isama yung 2019, 2018? Hindi po natin isasama yon Ang sakop pa lamang po natin, kagaya yung last year na curriculum exit tracking system, yung graduate ng 2021. Ngayon naman pong taon, yung gagraduate ng 2022. No? So malinaw po iyan. Sino po yung sasagot? Ayan, ito yung mga commonly asked questions, no? Sino yung sasagot nito? Ang sasagot po nito ay ang mismong bata. Ma'am, wala po silang email address. Grade 12 na sila. They need the email address. Kaya nga nilang mag-Facebook. Kaya nga nilang mag-Instagram. Therefore, meron yang mga email address. Meron lang tayong ilan na pinagbibigyan, lalong-lalo na yung walang access sa internet. That's the time that we involve our class advisors no, to gather the information in the tracking system para, para sila yung mag-submit na lang online. No? Pero that's a case-to-case -case basis and we encourage na sana sila because this is also an application nung kanilang natutuhan. By this time, by grade 12, dapat marunong na yan mag-send ng email. Dapat alam na nila yung pagsagot sa mga forms, no? Kasi kung hindi pa nila yan alam by grade 12, what will happen to them? Hindi talaga sila ready, ibig sabihin. Kaya isa yun sa mga, yan, actually dalawa yan dun sa mga competencies na itinuturo din ng curriculum exit tracking system natin. And we should also remember that the generated data will be used for policy or curricular reforms. So if you will ask us, um, kailan magiging available yung mga data na kinuha natin or yung nagather natin that's after siguro kapag ka after ng closing ng ng link na ito siguro give us 2 to 3 months before we can generate ayan so hindi naman po ano yun uh, para rin yan sa ating lahat kaya lang it will be very difficult for us to provide you right after the gathering of the data no? So siguro pagka-close niya, halimbawa, nag-close na siya ng July, July, August, September, October. That's the time na maari kaming makapag-distribute sa inyo, sa inyong regions ng kanilang mga responses no? para may idea din kayo. And also, um, kailangan din kasi natin yung count na ito para sa reports natin. Mamaya ipapakita ko sa inyo yan. So definitely, yung uh, pagsasubmit, we can actually ask them 
to save the screenshot para alam din natin ilan yung pumasok na information doon sa curriculum exit tracking system natin. Okay? Now, we shall have the program implementers. So, sino-sino ba yung mga involved sa ating career guidance program? For our career guidance program, we have uh, in the school level, we have the school head. So, ano yung uh, expected from our school heads? Designate the career guidance advocates for school year 2021-2022. Lead the implementation of the career guidance program, including supervision and monitoring of school career guidance activities. Conduct of, conduct of orientation for teachers, learners, and parents on career guidance program. Allocate budget for the materials and other related expenses for the conduct of the program. And submit the school career guidance program implementation report, Annex C, to the division supervisor. Okay? So, ganito yung itsura ng ating Annex C. Nakalagay dyan, Annex C, School Career Guidance Implementation Report. The school, the division, the date of submission, name of school head, and the region. Kailan to sinasubmit? This is annual. No? It, ang ating mga division and regional supervisors will be the ones to provide you with a schedule. This is uh, an annual report. No? So, say for example, uh, if you look into the items here, we have the Career Guidance Program, Career Guidance Learning Activity Plan, and the Career Counseling and Consultation. So also on the fourth um, box, you can see there the Curriculum Exit Tracking System. So ano yung laman ng sa facilitation, no? yung first part? So sa facilitation of Career Guidance Orientation, you may attach documentation, photos, videos, Program Matrix, Summary of Activity, Evaluation Report. So this one, um, we need evidences. No? So halimbawa, you conducted a school orientation. Lagay niyo dyan, school orientation on career guidance program. And then the date of facilitation, kailan siya ginawa sa duration ng one year. You decide also, kasi kailangan niyo yan i-design sa inyong uh, respective schools. And then the target number of attendees. So say for example, you are targeting only grade 10 learners. So ilan lang yung target number of attendees. Hindi natin ilalagay yung total number of students. No? Sino lang ba yung target number of attendees? Usually ginagawa natin siya per grade level. Or kung medyo marami tayong panahon, maaring gawin din natin siya per section. And then... Actual number of attendees. So we understand bakit natin tinitingnan yung target number tapos yung actual number. Um, tinitingnan natin dito kasi yung feasibility dahil iba-iba yung learning modality. No? So say for example, ang target number of attendees natin ay 400. Uh, lahat sila ay nasa halimbawa online learning. No? So may nagsabi doon sa out of the 400, ang nakarating lang ay 200. What happened to the other 200? No? So makikita natin dyan, um, ano pa yung ibang modalities din na maaring gawin in relation sa ating career guidance orientation. No? So maari kasing hindi talaga kaya na mag-online ng bata. So ano pa yung pwede? Yung outcome, doon natin ilalagay yung mga possible, yung kinalabasan ng orientation. Ito bang population na ito, may mas madali sa kanila yung kanilang pagbibigay ng or paggawa ng decision in relation to career guidance, no? So, yun yung mga outcome na tinitingnan natin. And then, the career guidance learning activity plan. So, ito, ay tinitingnan natin yung actual accomplishment, no? So, letter A provides relevant and updated information to learners. So, Ano yung schedule of distribution and retrieval of activity sheets, learning resource link, and other supplementary on, um, information. Dito mag-iiba-iba yan. No? Malaki yung diferensya niya pagdating doon sa ating mga le different learning modalities. So ano yung actual accomplishment ng school? So yun. Wala namang perfect number. Wala tayong target na ganun. Pero paano natin ibinigay, dapat na doon siya sa actual accomplishment, 
paano natin ibinigay yung relevant and updated information to our learners. Isa-stipulate lang doon. No? And then, prepares and distributes career guidance learning plan. Meron na kayong career guidance learning plan. So, paano ninyo masasabi na naka distribute siya ng maayos, no? So ilagay nyo lang din kung paano din distribute yung ating career guidance learning plan. And then prepares and distributes um, career guidance learning activity sheets, no? Pwede yung soft copy or hard copy. Depende din yan sa allocation, budget allocation at sa learning delivery na mayroon kayo sa school ninyo o yung most preferred ng bata, no? So, ang kagandahan kasi sa career guidance, lahat ay available online. Pwede rin siyang ipasa via messenger. Hindi ganun kalalaki yung mga file niya. So, I am encouraging na instead of having it na um, tawag dito hard copy, baka pwedeng soft copy yung i-distribute. At yung output kasi meron din siyang implication dun sa e-portfolio. Yung physical kasi ngayon, mas malaki yung... Uh, pagkakataon o yung chance na mawala yun. Halimbawa, pinagawa natin sila ng collage or in relation dito sa mga career guidance activities natin, may mga output sila. Baka rin mawala. So at least madaling maitabi or maid madali yung uh, soft copy. no So tingnan natin yung feasibility niyan. Pero kung physical lang or yung hard copy lang ang kaya talaga, uh, hindi naman natin yun pipigilan. And then, attend to the learner's concerns in different modalities. So, madali naman siya. Paano nyo yun mapapatunayan? Di naman natin kailangan ng lahat ng picture, pero pakita lang natin paano natin ginawang available yon. And then, encourages learners to appropriately use tools, ideas, methods, or ways of knowing to accomplish the activity and or solve the problems. No? Kasi maaring dun sa learning activity plan, no? hindi pa nandun or hindi pa kumpleto yung direction or procedure na gagawin. So, paano natin yon mas mapapalinaw o paano yung ginawang method or strategy ng school para mas maging malinaw yon sa mga learners na gagamit ng material na yun, no So, dun siya papasok. And then, we have the career counseling and consultation. So, kung meron naman, ang ilalagay nyo lang dyan ay accomplished. No? So, responds appropriately to learners' questions and comments, tapos explains important ideas in a clear and practical way. Provides time and direction for individual counseling or consultation, attends to the learners' concerns in different modalities, and responds appropriately to learners' questions, clarifications, and comments. No? So kung nagawa naman, ibig sabihin available ang career counseling and consultation sa school nyo mismo, you can just put accomplished under doon sa accomplishment. No? And the number four, the curriculum exit tracking system. So number of senior high school graduates. So dapat kung meron kayong 700 na senior high school na graduate, Ang target natin sana lahat sila ay magkaroon ng entry doon sa ating curriculum exit tracking system. That's our target. However, kung hindi siya ma-reach because of some difficulties, ilalagay lamang 'yan as a notation or uh, lagyan natin ng recommendation kasi baka mamaya ang kailangan pala nating i-distribute hard copy din ng curriculum exit tracking system. However, ang downside lang nung hard copy, mas matatagal lang tayo kasi i-encode pa natin yan isa-isa. So, at this point, early pa lang, no, ihanda na rin natin sila. Nakakasagot yan ng mga Google Forms and all. Meron tayong mga online din na survey via Messenger. You can look into that. No? Baka kaya nila na isend lang natin yung link tapos they can accomplish that. Um, Doon sa mga ano na yan, dun, through the link, no? Isa yan sa mga training na dapat alam nila or the competencies. And then prepared by the name of and signature of school head. So kanino niya ibibigay ito? submit ito sa ESP Division Supervisor. So mamaya, bibigay ko sa inyo ano yung task ng ating division level. Okay? 
what is the role naman of our guidance counselor if ever you have a guidance counselor in your school? So the guidance counselor shall assist the school head in the overall implementation of the school career guidance activities. So simula doon sa orientation hanggang doon sa monitoring and evaluation, the guidance counselor may assist the school head. And then provide technical assistance to career advocates on the implementation of school career guidance activities and provide counseling and referral services when necessary. So this is in accordance to RA 9258 or the Guidance and Counseling Law of 2004. By the way, before uh, I forget, meron tayong um, counseling and referral services also through a DM. No? Um, we will have our orientation next week in relation to counseling and referral. Kasi iba din yung kinakailangan natin in relation dito sa ating counseling and referral services. So I hope uh, all of you, ayan, ayan baka maaari din kayong mag-attend uh, ng ating national orientation on counseling and referral system for our learners for school year 2021-2022. Okay. And then here, the career guidance advocate. So, ano yung task or ano yung roles and responsibilities niya? No? Facilitate the printing and distribution of learning materials and other supplementary materials on career guidance. No? So, maaring kasing printed or maaring soft file yung i-distribute. And then, disseminate information for the learners such as senior high school tracks and strands offered in the division, labor market information, schools and courses for college, technical courses for middle-level skills development, and entrepreneurship-related programs and materials that the learners may utilize. And then we, they can also uh, conduct the career consultation as deemed necessary and facilitate the completion and submission of all documents relevant to the career guidance program. No? So in some cases, our career guidance advocate also works as the guidance designate. So ibig sabihin, yung other task niya includes the homeroom guidance program. No? So dito, um, sa school level, maaring mag-designate ang ating uh, school head ng specific person as a career guidance advocate and another person who can be the guidance designate. Possible yun, no? Lalong-lalo na kung malaki yung population. If you're going to ask me, ano ba yung ratio na kakailangan din o ano yung ratio required uh, in this particular program, ideally, this is 1 is to 500, uh, the guidance counselors, no? Um, dito sa career guidance advocates, since limited yung ating services na ba ipoprovide, for school year 2021-2022, we understand na kakayanin siguro up to 1,000, no? Pero wag namang sobra-sobra doon dahil mahihirapan din yung career guidance advocate natin, no? So yun po, para mas maging efficient din sila. And you can also maximize yung mga possible services na maaring maibigay ng ating career guidance advocate. So for the career guidance advocate, it is good that you attended this national orientation. Um, maari ring mag-initiate yung ating mga division level supervisors and the regional level superv supervisors para sa capacity building ng career guidance advocate. You know what? Last week, last actually two weeks ago, um, meron tayong mga kasamahan na talagang nagpa-personal message kasi bagong designate lang sila sa guidance and counseling or the guidance designate, ano? As guidance designate. Tapos, medyo malayo yung mga guidance counselors na license, yung mga licensed guidance counselors doon sa school kung nasaan sila. At wala talaga silang idea about the guidance and counseling services. So, humihingi sila ng tulong. So ito din, yung appeal ko sa ating mga ESP supervisors in the division and regional level that we provide advocacy or the uh, capacity building, no? capacitate, let us capacitate 
yung mga dinedesignate natin no uh, lalong lalo na sa school level because they are the frontliners sila yung talagang nagpa-facilitate or nag implement nung ating mga program so part of our obligation is to really provide and train them how to do these things no kaya kahit na gabing gabi minsan nirereplyan ko talaga para lang matulungan no kasi yun yung medyo gap na kailangan natin i-ensure na mabigyan ng ma-address ma natin no so yun We cannot just tell them na, oh, you are designated for this year. You do these things according to this DM. No, hindi po siya ganun. Kailangan meron po talagang proper capacity building or the training for them. No, marami po silang tanong in relation dito sa ating mga services. Okay, now we move forward to our schools division office who's in charge. The education sa pagpapakatao, supervisor, of the Curriculum Implementation Division or the CID shall ayan, lead the division implementation of Career Guidance Program, coordinate with the School Governance and Operations Division for the turnover of Career Guidance Program documents and budget allocation for school year 2021-2022. Um, for everyone's information, nanggaling kasi ito sa office ni Yusek Alain before, no? And it was transferred to Uh, the, C, uh, the CLMD, the CID, and the uh, Curriculum and Instruction, the Central Office. No? So if ever na hindi pa po nakakapag-turnover, if ever no, na hindi pa nakakapag-turnover, you may ask your SGOD. No? Pero kung nakapag-turnover naman, na, no need. No, no need. Kasi uh, baka sabihin nila uh, ano yung... Kumbaga parang wala na kami ita-turn over, no? Ito lang naman ay para doon sa mga hindi pa nakakapag-turn over. And then, provide schools with relevant and updated information relative to the conduct of career guidance activities such as tracks and strands offering in the division, labor market information, schools and courses for college education, technical courses for the middle-level skills development, Certification process or guidelines and entrepreneurship-related programs and materials that learners may utilize. So ito yung parang research part na task ng ating ESP supervisor. No? Um, hindi naman mag-isa lamang siya dito. Actually, pwede din siyang mag-tap ng mga uh, possible individuals or ng mga guidance counselors in the division who can help her na mag-gather. Tapos yung information na i-gather na yun, yun yung binablast natin sa mga schools. no? And then, provide career guidance, learning materials, and supplementary materials for the schools. This year, hindi naman tayo mahihirapan no? uh, in relation dito sa supplementary materials because we have that. Ayan, ibibigay ko sa inyo yung link ng Google Drive natin for those uh, supplementary materials. Tapos kapag may bago, dun din namin siya ipapasok para no need na siya na i-download sa ating learning uh, portal. no? But we will also make those available sa ating LR portal para naman doon sa hindi makaka-access ng Google Drive. no? Uh, para walang reason na hindi kasi namin na uh, access or wala kaming kopya, yung mga ganyan. Also, some of our learning, uh, our supplementary materials, nasa YouTube na rin siya. Yan yung isa sa mga magandang bagay that after the evaluation of the implementation last year, naging, ano, naging bukas din tayo, yung TWG, yung team na... Uh, na craft din nitong another DM na ito na maibigay din yung mga possible uh, links no in relation dito na hindi mahihirapan yung learners mismo na uh, access nila and then we also have to or the ESP supervisor um, task no shall establish linkages with other government offices NGOs and groups relevant to the conduct of career guidance activities no so yung ating mga uh, kasama sa uh, federation ayan yung FC GANP if you are familiar with uh, the the organization they may actually coordinate with the school's division office through the ESP supervisor in relation dun sa mga possible um 
tie up nila in relation dun sa mga programs natin, sa career guidance program. At maganda yon na mangyari. Kapag ganun, maganda rin na mamaya uh, makita rin natin na possible din the through the regional office yung magiging ganong uh, linkages. Pero yung other organizations and private organizations, ayan, maari din, or the non-government organizations, maari makipag-usap din sa ating mga ESP supervisor in relation dito sa ating career guidance program. Baka meron pang mga other supplementary material that they can provide our learners. Ayan. Um, let's just make sure na hindi hindi sila yung uh, type of organization who will ask us to pay trainings, no? Hindi po ganun. Uh, may mga ganun kasing lumalapit din sa central office na sasabihin nila they would like to provide the supplementary material but they need or uh, we need to pay them for the training. Uh, sana hindi na ganun kasi established naman yung ating career guidance program and what we need is uh, sa, sa support maaring tayo-tayo din yung magsuportahan dito no hindi natin pagbabayarin yung sino man para lang magbigay sa atin ng technical assistance because uh, sa structure natin we can provide technical assistance to our colleagues no and then support monitor and evaluate the conduct of career guidance activities and submit the division career guidance implementation report annex d to the regional office Okay, so this is how Annex D looks like. Ayan, the Division Career Guidance Implementation Report. So you can see there, Division Career Guidance Implementation Report. You can include there the name of your division and then the region. So meron tayo ditong ilang mga pamantayan no, na tinitingnan. Say for example, school number one. Ayan, yung sakop ng division. School one. Gumawa ba sila ng career guidance orientation? So you are going to base this dun sa binigay na report ng ating school heads. So makikita ninyo dyan, O is for outstanding. So 90%, 100% participation of stakeholders, adherence to the guidelines or evidence-based uh, practices, timelines and quality delivery of services, outstanding evaluation results after each activity. So yun yung sinispell out natin na 90 to 100%. Makikita nyo yan doon sa report na binibigay ng school head kung talaga bang nakapag-adhere sila doon sa guidelines kasi may mga items doon na hinihimay din. And then very satisfactory, 80 to 89%. So 80 to 89% participation of stakeholders. So be it the orientation of learners, the orientation of teachers, or the parents, Ayun yung average na tinitingnan, ano? And then adherence to the guidelines or evident best practices, timelines, timeliness, and quality delivery of services, and very satisfactory evaluation results after each activity. So yun yung nilalagay natin dito sa career guidance orientation, career guidance learning plan, and career consultation and career counseling. Also for curriculum exit tracking system. No? So dito lang siya, ang ilalagay nyo lang ito, O ba siya, VS, satisfactory, needs improvement ba or poor. Now, what is your recommendation based on, the, uh, based on this um, particular report? No? Ano yung recommendation? We need your recommendation para pagdating sa regional report, mamaya makikita nyo, exactly parang similar lang din sila dito. Uh, makikita ninyo ano yung mga pwedeng mechanisms na pwede pa nating gawin to further improve our program. no? And uh, we need that. Uh, hindi naman natin titingnan dito, ah, itong division na ito, karamihan ng school, nagkaroon tayo ng needs improvement. no? So titingnan din natin based on your recommendation kung ano yung pwede nating uh, magawa pa na pamamaraan para mas mag-improve yung ating participation as well as the implementation of the career guidance program. And then this is uh, this should be prepared and uh, signed by our ESP supervisor and noted by our school's division superintendent. Now, in the regional office, so the curriculum and learning management division or the CLMD, 
through the edukasyon sa pagpapakatao, supervisor shall support career guidance program activities, ensure proper implementation of the career guidance program through monitoring and evaluation, provide technical assistance to division supervisors through orientation, training, and capacity building activities, and submit the Regional Career Guidance Implementation Report or the Annex E to the National Office. No? So as what have um, um, Bell mentioned earlier yan, during our opening program, isa din sa target natin why we are doing the orientation para magkaroon din tayo ng chance to plan for our uh, implementation sa ating specific region. So if ever that you will cascade this orientation to other members or to other stakeholders na uh, kailangan mabigyan ng orientation na ito, you need to have a concrete plan or schedule no, in relation sa monitoring and evaluation, in relation dito sa other capacity building activities. You may include that. no. So dito makikita na rin, ano yun na po project natin na kakailangan o kinakailangan ng ating mga implementers no, sa division at sa school level. So that is the task of the regional supervisor. No? Uh, paano natin sila maa-assist? Um, kayo rin kasi yung nakakaalam kung ano yung naging performance ng inyong division or ng inyong, sorry, ng inyong region for last year's uh, career guidance implementation. So kung meron kayong mga nais ipatupad ngayon or nais na ipropose na gawin sa ating division at schools, you may do so. No? Yan po yung kagandahan ng meron tayong orientation para ma-orient nyo rin sila ano yung ways forward ng ating uh, implementation ng program na ito. So you are required to submit the Annex E or the Regional Career Guidance Implementation Report. So very ano siya, Father, we pray. God, our Almighty Father, we praise and thank you. We are grateful for the opportunity of teaching and learning. Make each of us worthy to serve our learners. Bless our learners for open mindedness to learn what is good for their growth. Make us have positive view on homeroom guidance procedures. All this we do for your greater glory. In Jesus' name, Amen.